And now an ancient reading from Isaiah. This is a message of hope and resilience from Isaiah chapter 43. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And a modern lesson, this by C.S. Lewis, included in his book, The Screwtape Letters. All mortals tend to turn into the thing they are pretending to be. This is elementary. Read that once more. All mortals tend to turn into the thing they are pretending to be. This is elementary. You know, every week on Sunday mornings, as I come to the church, as I come into the sanctuary to prepare for worship, I try to look around and visualize the day that we will all gather here together again. It will be joyous and it will be different. For example, we might need to meet in smaller groups for a time where we can spread out. We won't be able to have breakfast. Maybe we'll have you know, designated areas or times for folks who are at higher risk. We're figuring that out now, right? Figuring out how to put as much planning as possible to make it the smoothest, most integrated experience as we return to worship someday. We're doing our best to think it through and plan. But in the meantime, as these weeks of quarantine drag on, it's starting to feel oddly familiar, though not necessarily welcomed, at least by all of us. I feel like there's this moment every morning when I first wake up and it dawns on me, oh, we're still doing this. The strangeness of it has sort of pulled the rug out from under us in different ways, perhaps. Even if we're doing okay personally, we're aware that people are suffering. Economic issues, health concerns, fears related to instability, all of the unknowns of the situation that we're living in. We're dealing with some very tough realities. I don't want to bring us down, but I think it is important to acknowledge some of them. Locally, for example, our church is heavily involved in Room in the Inn, which is a collaborative program to house people experiencing homelessness. Because of the virus, we just learned this past week that it is necessary to cancel the upcoming summer session of Room in the Inn. We are of course aware of the increased vulnerability of folks who live in shelters or on the street. Now, not only due to hot weather in Texas, but now also because of coronavirus. For people who live in community, it's particularly difficult to quarantine those who live in shelters or prisons or just on the streets. And now one of the ways that we could help a very small number of some of those folks won't be able to happen. On a national level, over the past weeks, we've seen a healthcare system that cannot provide basic protective equipment for its front line. Testing is unreliable, vaccines a long way off. Small businesses, large ones too, can't pay their workers or their rent for that matter. I haven't looked in the last few days, but how many people have sought unemployment benefits? Maybe close to 30 million. We have seen a government that has so severely damaged the credibility of the media that some people disregard basic facts that can save their lives or at least keep them from endangering other people's lives. We don't want to put our heads in the sand. 
And at the same time, it can be challenging to stay up with the news and to keep your sanity. Even more so in quarantine when the power of supportive community is diminished. You're less able to connect with it. For most of us, the uncertainty of our current reality is difficult and unsettling. We don't know how long this will go on. When will things get back to normal? What will the future normal look like? Will we be able to hug each other again? For those of us who like to hug, I mean. The craziness of these days begs the question, is it possible to be fully present to the struggles around us and at the same time to maintain a deep sense of calm? How do we develop the ability to live from a place of centeredness that is not dependent on circumstance? That's a question that has been on my mind for some time now, even before coronavirus. When I was anticipating November's upcoming election, I was planning a fall worship series on spiritual resiliency. One of the resources I have found is an author named Michael Singer, S-I-N-G-E-R. He suggests what I think is a very helpful starting place for those of us who seek to build a spiritual resiliency that can carry us through difficulty. He says, yes, these are unprecedented times. But if we're talking about spiritual resiliency, that doesn't make any difference. He says, we all live in two worlds. There's the outside world and the inside world. We live in two environments. And it's always been that way. It's no different now. There's what's going on outside and what's going on inside. The outside, we have no control over. Well, we might have a tiny bit of impact on the outside world, but for an individual, there's no control over the reality outside of ourselves. And again, it's always been that way. The outside world unfolds as it will. Sometimes we welcome how the outside world unfolds, and other times we don't. The inside world is a different story. He says we have complete control over the inside world. We may not think we do, but I think he's right. We really do have control over our inside world. Our mind, our emotions, our consciousness, the center of our will, strength, and power, these things are ultimately up to us. And if we find that our inside world is in turmoil, not only do we have the power to regain peace, but we have the responsibility to do so. No matter the circumstance of the outside world, our inside world can be a beautiful place. Our inside world can be peaceful and just if we can manage to love ourselves. If the outside world isn't beautiful, it doesn't have to come into and disturb the inside. Now, you may not have the ability to snap your fingers and instantly feel peace inside if the outside world is terrifying enough. I mean, some people can do that. I am not one of them. But you have the ability, each one of us has the ability over time and with practice to create peace on the inside. Now some of you may be rolling your eyes at me right now. She doesn't know what my inside world is like. Well, that's true. I do not know your inside world. But here's something that is also true. A person will always be better off if they are centered and clear and filled with energy. 
and clarity because then they can deal with the outside world, whatever it is that unfolds. When we live from a place of fear and anxiety, we're not doing anyone any good. Perhaps that's why the essence of true spiritual teaching across religions or traditions is that we have a responsibility. Each of us has a responsibility to find a place of centered calmness so that we can come forward and do the very best we can with the moment that is unfolding right in front of us, whatever it may be. If we want to serve and help others, which is central to all mainstream religious teaching, we need to be clear. Singer gives the example, a person who freezes at the sight of blood will be of no help at the scene of a critical car accident. They won't be able to be helpful. You need to be okay with the situation in order to serve, in order to bring the best of your being to the moment at hand. This moment, as difficult as it may be, is essentially no different than any other. Peace in the inside world starts with realizing that in times of crisis, we draw strength from whatever our preparation, whatever our practice has been before that. How does C.S. Lewis put it? We become the thing we're pretending to be. It's the work we do before that allows us to handle the moment at hand. This moment is essentially no different than any other moment. It is up to each of us to calm down and do our part. First to ourselves, to take care of ourselves, and then to serve our communities, to make good decisions, to do the best we can in this moment. We can deal with the various situations that unfold, even if they are difficult, by doing the best we can. It starts there, with taking responsibility for ourselves. But some of us are learning very important things right now about ourselves. We're learning that we don't have those internal resources to draw upon that we thought we did. So I want to talk for a moment to people who feel like this accelerated time of disruption is getting the best of them. Conceptually, you agree with this distinction between inside and outside worlds. Yeah, yeah, you realize full well that you don't have control over the big picture, but you're somehow not able to find peace inside. You'd like to think that you can, but you've tried and you haven't been able to. That will be our topic next week. I don't purport to have it all figured out, mind you, but I'm doing a lot of reading, talking to a lot of people who are smart and wise, you know. Some of my days, I am mindful that I'm acting out of fear, but that realization is critical if I ever want to act differently. Yes, there are a lot of deeply spiritual, intelligent people out there that we can all use as resources, and their wisdom has never been more accessible than it is right now. Many people just doing live streams every day. Plus, there are the ancient resources of religious tradition. What can we learn from them that can help us find interior peace now? We'll talk about that next Sunday, but don't wait until next Sunday to think about it. Don't resign yourself to being in, in a place of turmoil for another week. Start thinking about it now. Start thinking about your ability to control and to claim peace in your inside world. Now is the moment. We can use this time to figure out what we need to do. This could be the moment of discernment and practice that will carry you for the rest of your life. I want to close with a poem by Dana Falls. 
It's called Let It Go. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold. The holding of plans, or dreams, or expectations. Let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide. The choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in struggle, fear, and desperate attempts to flee from the very energy you long for. Let it go. Let it all go and flow with the grace that washes through your days, whether you receive it gently or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks, but you will move forward nonetheless. Let go, and the wave's crest will carry you to unknown shores, beyond your wildest dreams or destinations. Let it all go, and find the place of rest and peace and certain transformation. Friends, thank you for coming to church today. I hope that you've heard something that can get you on a path to living a better life, a happier life, one that will inspire you to do your part. In the name of our God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, go blessed.